This college basketball picks and FCS week five college football edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use promo code SGP when you sign up to turn $4 into $256. If the college basketball underdog of your choosing pulls off the upset, that's code SGP to turn $4 into $256 for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. We're also brought to you by BetQL. BetQL is your home for the info you need to make yourself smarter, better. College basketball, NBA, and NHL, whatever the sport they got you covered. Plus, use promo code SGP30 for 30% off the premium data. Just go to BetQL.com, promo code SGP30. That's BetQL.com, promo code SGP30. We're also brought to you by Better Than Vegas. Better Than Vegas is running a free bracket-style capper contest with a chance to win $5,500. To enter, just go to BetterThan.Vegas. Don't forget to let them know that SGP sent you. We're also brought to you by Odds Crowd. Are you the best college hoops better in the country? Odds Crowd is challenging you you to prove it with their free March Madness Fantasy Betting Contest with over $8,000 in cash prizes. Download their app today, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash odds. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash odds. Finally, we're brought to you by Better Edge. Better Edge operates like a stock exchange for the sports world. Pick the teams you like and have someone else by the other side. Sign up at betteredge.com, promo code SGP for a free $10 play. That's BET. T-T-O-R, edge.com, promo code S-G-P. Ooh, welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer dog? Uh, it, this is March. Yes. Holy definitely. T- <laughs> well, watch your language, Ryan. This is a, a family program. Hot Drop, dang. <laughs> dropping the T-bombs early on. Holy Toledo, indeed, joining us, as always, talking college basketball. Colby Dan, a.k.a. the Dan to base. What's happening, Colby? Guys, I got, what, 19 (laughs) different, 19 games today decided decided by four points or less. Right now, I got Utah, USC in double overtime mixed with Southern and Grambling. It's all tied up at 55, less than a minute left. And then Florida Atlantic, La Tech in the Conference USA. Currently, La Tech up by two, but just 14 seconds left. This is March. This is amazing. <laughs> I feel like you guys, your uh, your this is March is just the juice off of the uh, Georgetown money line hit. So congratulations, Georgetown hits. Uh, we had uh, Miami going the day before, so the dogs have been barking early already. A nice little uh, stretch run here for the podcast. Which, by the way, speaking of Georgetown, I'm sure you saw, but uh, somehow Patrick Ewing was not recognized in Madison Square Garden. <laughs> I, I mean, hey, there's a lot of seven foot Jamaicans going through, uh, you know, trying to trying to set off bombs in Madison Square Garden. <laughs> He's like, I built this place. <laughs> Just an un- un- I mean, uh, not not all of those seven foot Jamaicans missed a finger roll to win the Knicks a champion. Oh, you burning, dude! I thought you were a Knicks fan. You're gonna burn my guy Ewing. I got a pair of knee pads hanging up that were worn by. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, a little bit. I'm I'm a Knicks fan. It hurt. That was a tough year. I'm a Knicks fan, dude. I I get it completely. Charles, <laughs> call me Jerry. Is uh. Do you treat the NBA like the XFL? You have your you you have like eight teams or? Well, no, I I quit the NBA when that. When, <laughs> uh, Once they stopped calling travel, and Colby had nothing, no well, the, interest in the league. I'll be honest, dude. As a Nick fan, Ewing traveled every fucking time, and and I was <laughs> that that podcast revealed everything because I I had been a skeptic on the uh, uh on the the likes of the NBA refereeing for a long time. It just didn't make sense. Ewing being even being. <laughs> You could have been a Cleveland Cavalier. So the league's been fixed. It's been horrible for the, a long time. The envelope was frozen. It was frozen, baby. Well, yeah, I'm uh, I'm not in the studio, but we're we're still doing it. We 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 are contractually obligated to talk FCS football. Don't worry, we'll put that at the end of the episode. Colby, <laughs> when we're preparing for the episode, Colby had 12 FCS games on the sheet, and Kramer and I had to. It was really uh, Sophie's choice for Colby to whittle down 12 FCS games down to six. Colby, I mean, these are like your children. What was it like to, to whittle them down to only six FCS games? Because we got we to gotta hit on this college basketball action. 
Uh, you know, I was really let down by your text message. I felt, I mean, look, having 12 <laughs> kids, I, I could identify with Sean. Ke- and I, I was just looking for a line of cocaine to, to <laughs> spirits. But, All but, right. What a great lineup, though. By the way, those six, I picked the six best games. These are these are some uh, some awesome games, awesome action. If you're betting on college basketball, which of course you are, that's why you're listening to the podcast. You should be doing it over at DraftKings Sportsbook, and more importantly, you should be using that promo code SGP, where you can turn four dollars into two hundred and fifty-six dollars. Maybe you picked uh, Georgetown. And uh, turn four dollars into two hundred fifty-six. I mean, the money line was pretty generous already, but four dollars into two hundred fifty-six just for picking a college basketball underdog. And our dogs have been barking so far on this uh, stretch run as we lead you up to March Madness. Again, download the top-rated DraftKings sportsbook app now and use promo code SGP when you sign up to turn four dollars to two hundred fifty-six dollars if the underdog of your choosing pulls off the upset. Let's go to SGP to turn four dollars into two hundred fifty-six dollars. For a limited time, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Oh, man. It was uh, was hanging out with some family, hung out with my dad. My dad was walking me through his uh, pre-noon yoga routine, and... Uh, Guess how many beers my dad has before noon, before his noon yoga class. Six. <laughs> not, uh, it's not six, but just the fact that it's higher than zero is is uh, just hilarious. He said it helps it helps loosen him up, and it also helps him uh, keep hydrated. So, well, I, I, I feel like I feel like yoga is all about being hydrated and beer. I mean. I know beer hydrates you when you're uh, near the equator, but I, I don't know if it works the same when you're at home and it's a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> oh no, Ryan, this is weekday. Oh, I'm sorry. Thursday afternoon. The, the old, the, I mean, you know what? There is one thing that I'm starting to appreciate about the uh, generation older than us. They really know how to make time about themselves. Like once they get older, <laughs> when they were working, it was all about work, all about kids. But the second it's time to be about them, <laughs> Everything goes out the window. Oh, you know, it's like we're, they're taking naps at 11 a.m. It's like, what? <laughs> what? You took a nap at 11 a.m. Jesus. Why not? I'm retired. What was your your dad had a your dad uh, had a uh, pretty great uh, T-shirt, Kramer? What was it? Something about uh, drink beer and wait, what was it? Oh no, I, he's got a couple like that. You know, we kind of strapped the the gimmick. I I don't remember. I I have no idea. Oh you, man, you know it what? was just something about. Uh, it was just basically prioritizing beer in your life, and he would just rock that thing. Uh. <laughs> my, you know, well, when I was a kid, so uh, funny enough, I d- didn't think it was an odd thing, but somehow I've managed to uh, taken on this. Maybe, or maybe it's hereditary, but he would leave beer cans all over the house, uh, like just half drank. And he would, <laughs> when I was a kid, he like I I don't think we had a ton of money. He was bringing home the twenty four packs of Meisterbrow. <laughs> Which I'm sure Colby knows Meister Brow. Meister uh, that, no, I mean my, I think that was my dad's drink of choice too, man. Oh, look at us. We are uh, two peas of a pod. I think Meister Brow was the uh, like the bush bush the the beast light equivalent, maybe. But, yeah. Oh, man. Well and another thing, the older generation it was an import though. It was an import. <laughs> The older generation were kind of great because they would do martini lunches and then go handle like million dollar deals or like big, (laughs) big court cases, you know, like nowadays you can't get away with that because camera phones just blow away. But I, I, you know, I worked with a few bartenders that served judge Ito and he, they were like, he would do like uh, two martinis and then go to go back to court. So (laughs) like kudos to them. They're, they're just a better generation than us. Let's be honest. Uh, Well, yeah. yeah. And and, and alcohol, that's all. Yeah, they're just raging alcoholics. And Judge Ito did a great job on that trial. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe maybe, Mar- maybe the martinis are to play. All right, Colby. Speaking of drinking, let's crack open the Colby Dance six pack college basketball uh, basketball tomorrow, aka today when you're listening to the podcast, March twelfth. Ito. <laughs> Having a martini over there, Sean. Yeah, I, well, I've had, I mean, again, did some traveling, did some drinking. It's uh, late where the time zone where I'm at. Ohio State, 
squaring off against Purdue, Big Ten tournament, Ohio State laying one and a half. Colby, what are you doing? Uh, what's the play here? I feel like I, I feel like I'm riding Ohio State, right? Even though it, Purdue is red hot against the spread, five and zero oh against the spread. Am I crazy to fade them with this uh, by taking this Ohio State team? Uh, no, I, I like your angle, even though Ohio State kind of been losing lately and, and really almost lost to Minnesota. Um, but I, I like the angle. I think it's hard. I know. I know. I just said, well, NC State. It's hard to, to when they played Syracuse, they're not going to lose to a team three times in a year. But NC State also was missing two key players on that team. Um, so I'm, I'm going to say, look, I watched the last Ohio State Purdue game, just much like the Georgetown Nova game that we talked on, that we hit on. Um, this was a game that Ohio State should have won. Purdue got very fortunate. I think it was a buzzer beater. Uh, but they were down by like six with like maybe a minute and a half left. And they got really fortunate to win that game. Purdue swept them in the regular season. Give me Ohio state to get some revenge here because I kind of feel like both games, Ohio state was in position to win and then just somehow fumbled those opportunities. Well, it's, it's interesting, Colby, you mentioned the Syracuse game because I was at a airport bar watching the end of the Syracuse game. And while Syracuse didn't, get the win. They did get the cover. And it was interesting watching the people around the bar, watch me watch the game. As I, as I fist pumped and yelled through a N95 mask, fuck yeah, buddy, Bayheim. And we uh, definitely startled some of the people uh, at the uh, airport bar. And then people were like, did you go to Syracuse? I go, no, not at all. Yeah. But, uh, I did also, I uh, tweeted out a solid Photoshop to help, maybe help, uh, you know, kind of navigate the committee to the right decision of making uh, Syracuse, you know, getting Syracuse into the tournament. I tweeted out a photo of Buddy, Buddy Bayheim with my dog Buddy's head photoshopped on uh, Buddy Bayheim. So please retweet that to get the uh, committee aware. Kramer, what are you doing here on this uh, this Big Ten matchup? Hopefully Buddy is also into Dogecoin. That, that oh, he is. Next level uh, for each. I, you know, I, I think – to me, Ohio state is, is, is going to be the chalky side of this one. And I, and I think what Colby said, like this team hasn't been in great form. They barely beat a Minnesota team. Who's been dreadful away from the barn and this Purdue team, th there's something about them. I, I think uh, th like that. No one is really talking about on a five, six game winning. I'm sorry, five game win streak. Uh, they could go on a sneaky run. If the big 10 is a good conference, like we've been led to believe there's no reason this team can't surprise us and, uh, and make a little elite eight run. I think Purdue gets it done. I I'll say this wrong team favorite. Ooh. All right. Purdue catching a point and a half. Yeah. I mean, I, I see the angle on Purdue and they are, it, it is scary how hot they're coming in. Maybe I, maybe I'm just banking on the reset and I like Ohio state's matchup a little bit better here. Back to New York City for the big. Quick, sorry, sir. Are they? Where is this tourney being being played? The big... Indianapolis. Okay. What Purdue's pretty close. Pretty close by. Yeah, I mean Ohio State's not. You know, it's not that far. Crossing enemy lines. Everything's pretty close in the Big Ten, except Minnesota. And Maryland. Or, yeah, you're right. Maryland's a bit of a drive. And Rutgers. Or, uh, Rutgers. Yeah, you can do that in a day. <laughs> Georgetown, Seton Hall, New York City, Big East basketball. It's back. So is Georgetown. Seton Hall, though, two and a half point favorite. I mean, the handicap here is just basically how much is uh, how much is Georgetown smelling themselves after that big Villanova win? Are they are they going to keep it going, or was beating Villanova? Ewing, you know, kind of responding uh, in the press conference, everyone going nuts at, at the big Georgetown win. Was that their Super Bowl? To me, that's how you handicap this game. Uh, can Georgetown come back and pull out another upset, albeit a much smaller one, because they're getting the respect that they probably deserved uh, in the previous matchup against Nova. Colby, was that the Super Bowl for this uh, Georgetown team? No, uh, and they've been playing a lot better all second, really all February and March. Even their losses are misleading by the score, in my opinion, and that's why we we cashed in on that eight and a half. And they're going to be really good next year too because they got some big recruits coming in. But no, the play here, look, they played Seton Hall back on February twentieth, and they won by six. These teams split in the regular season. 
there's one team that, yeah, Seton Hall, okay, they got that win against St. John's today in overtime, but they have kind of been dying down the, the, down the stretch here. Well, at the same time, Georgetown's been on fire. I feel like just fire. Kind of just playing great ball. I mean, didn't miss a free throw today. Dante Harris coming up big, making both those free throws. You mix yeah. that with Blair, some of the other players that are just really, really good. Um, I, I like uh, Pickett, their big man. Uh, so just just a, a, a great underrated team, really. I feel like coming on, and I feel like kind of got fortunate that they're going to they're gonna play Seton Hall here instead of uh, St. John's or perhaps Creighton or UConn. So I think they're in a good spot to get to the Big East Championship, and then anything can happen there. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm kind of with you there. I mean, I think, and you kind of hit on it, the fact that Seton Hall had to go to overtime. Now you're playing a back-to-back game. Don't you love taking a dog, getting a little confidence, and they're playing a team that, again, had to play in overtime. I think that really matters in a, in a back-to-back situation. I'm with you. I'm going to go Georgetown here catching two and a half. Kramer, are you, um, I'm assuming you're on the Georgetown yeah, train. I think, I think- Bottom line. To me, it's about the free, it's the free throws and three. Yeah, and that's well, and great, uh, great point there. Of course, we did last or uh, yesterday. Days are all running together here, but we did our March Madness ten uh, gambling commandments, and we we threw in the free throw percentage, and sure enough, you know that was huge in that in that Georgetown win. And shout out to the people who are like, you, you, you can't cite it after the fact. Ken Palm has them as the 27th best or most efficient free throw shooting team in the land. Also matchup to look at for them is straight the three point line. I mean, they, they are a, a three point shooting team and Seton hall is not a three, uh, not a team that defends the three point line. Well, so I love that. I mean, again, there's no reason to not ride the money line clearly Ewing, like the reason you hire a player coach like that, a guy who's done it before is because you want that, that swagger that alpha mentality to 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 seep into the team and you see it you this was revenge from the 80s like they he jokingly (laughs) talked about it but this was revenge for Villanova so I I I I absolutely think Georgetown I mean the, the the Big East has produced some fun teams that have gone on some fun runs before while I don't think they get it all the way uh I I think you know would I love to see a little Georgetown UConn action Yes, please. No, if you're a Georgetown fan, you want Creighton to win because they split against Creighton. They won in. Uh, Colby, uh, I'm a fan of good basketball, and I know you are too. We want well, Georgetown UConn. Let's go on the money line again. Dogs are dogs. Well, I'm I'm a fan of uh, Syracuse, and and Colby pointed out that Georgetown winning against Seton Hall, but now winning the Big East, probably the best case scenario for Syracuse to make their case to get in that first four. <laughs> You got a lot of tough angles here. Ole Miss won today. Um, now you now Boise State lost for you, which is good. Yep. Nevada won, and Nevada could very well punch a ticket. There's a couple other games that uh, I would say you wanted St. John's to win and not Seton. Hall. Well, that is that is the problem. I do have Nevada twenty to one to uh, win that uh, conference tournament. So I, I got I got a lot of a uh, lot of irons in the fire, as they say. Virginia. Well, real quick, and before you get to Virginia, the other X factor with Syracuse getting into the tourney, and obviously they're going to be a play-in major count. They're going to be in one of the 12 play-in games, and it's the fact that they, you know, the half the media went to Syracuse. So, of course, there's some media executive somewhere wants to make sure he can get to watch his Syracuse on the first four Thursday night. They're yep. getting in. They're going on a run to the Sweet 16. We've seen this movie before. It's now the 11th commandment, all right? <laughs> I know there were supposed to be only 10, 11. When, if Syracuse is in the play-in game, if Syracuse is playing first four night, bet them to make the Sweet 16, period. At the moment, I would say I don't think they should be in because if you look at that resume, their best wins, Virginia Tech, that's another thing Virginia Tech just lost. And oh, we, well, I, I thought we weren't going to talk about it. I can't have anything now. Uh... I I'm saying anything nice. They're competing against teams like Drake. Drake's beat Loyola Chicago. Loyola Chicago is better than Virginia Tech this year. I'm sorry. And then and and, and the, the the resume that that Syrac- Syracuse got swept by Pitt. So uh, in my opinion, like they they just need to, like I would if if it was me, they would be like one of the first three out. But it depends how it all shakes out. It depends if Georgetown loses. It depends. Maybe I I, I see Lenardi put him in right after that that. Uh, 
that win yesterday as the last. Yep. So may, maybe so, but Utah State won tonight. Um, they're still. Oh, Syracuse is in. Come on, don't do this to me. I need this. Dude, they, they 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 scheduled like a bunch of pussies this year, and, and <laughs> they should be penalized for that. But I get your point. I get your point, and maybe they get in. Come on, and, buddy, Bayheim draining threes. You say you don't want to see that, Colby? He played hot. well today. They've been hot lately, but no, I don't want to see it. All right, I, I'm done with those. Look, look, Bayheim's had his his day in the sun. Drake, yeah, look, come on, it's his yeah day in the sun. His son's on the team. Come on, you, lost. you're rooting. Oh. Against- a team that has lost like three games all year, and you're trying to say this shit little team that's gotten hot for three days. That's should all they need. Better than a team that's been kicking ass all year, and they lost their their leading scorer and leading rebounder for a month, and they they should be they should be like rewarded for that, not not harped upon. Come on, put Drake in the tournament. Don't give me this Syracuse bullshit. Oh, Drake! Come on, Drake's in the tournament. There's 68 teams. Put them all in. We need a bigger bracket. Let's go, baby. Oh man, Sean! All right, let's let's keep picking games. I'm sorry. All right, wow, Ryan, Taskmaster over here. All right, oh, Dad. I was gonna Georgia start, Tech. I was gonna tout more. I was going to tout more, but we can tout later. Georgia Tech squaring off against Virginia in the ACC tournament, of course, uh, which uh, Virginia Tech no longer a part of. UVA, the good Virginia, at least this year, laying four after a you know, bit of a close. I mean buzzer beater game oh wait wait one other thing that giant white dude for west virginia how did he not get off that <laughs> shot he did the like triple clutch he only needed two clutches oh. and he could have got that shot off that third clutch is what got him and of course the the worst part was he hits that three and then to lose to uh to lose to virginia on that i mean okay state that was okay. No, no, I, I'm I'm talking about two different games here. I'm oh. saying, yeah, I'm saying West Virginia, him triple clutching when he should have only double clutched, and then also to lose that Cuse game on you know that Virginia three and and kudos to that kid. That was just as soon as that ball went up, I just said fuck, and again scared everyone at the uh, Denver airport. But I mean, this um, is the portion <laughs> of the podcast where Sean's just expressing himself. There, there's it's a stream of conscious. Yeah, I was I was combining a couple games there. Virginia, for me also, this is a similar, uh, they're laying four, similar angle to Georgetown where how does Virginia come back after that game? They just had this kind of scare against Syracuse and it really could go two ways where either it's one way of like, oh, okay, kind of rallies them or they kind of got exposed and weren't that good. Or it was, again, they rally around it. Uh, they kind of have some confidence off that game winning shot. They something they could build on Kramer. I'm assuming you're fading UVA because you're angry about the Virginia tech loss. What are you doing here? Oh, no, I, uh, you know, as you know, Sean, uh, Virginia tech and Georgia tech are gr- great, great rivals in the tech world. Oh, you're right. There's no way I would root for those fucking nerds. And uh, I feel slighted. UVA was a much better team today, and uh, Syracuse somehow just held on to that horseshoe in their tight assholes. Oh, come and on. They got to cover. Uh, I think Virginia, something happened in that, at the end of that game. They, they hit a buzzer beater. They're feeling themselves. Now this is when the run starts. This is a team that no one wants to see get hot. The confidence, they're going to roll it over from the last game. Four points is the wrong number. Uh, and... Uh, like the coach of Georgia Tech, uh, Pastner, the, the Matt, like we we have to have a serious conversations about coaching attire, mainly their <laughs> facial attire. Like, how is it that we got to see Andy Reid and Bruce Arians look like complete savages with their mask getups, and yet they look <laughs> so much more normal than you just just strange like band nerds wearing like face shields to prevent the trumpet section from spitting on them. I don't understand. The, what the, the clear handle it. The clear face shield is so bizarre. It, it almost, it reminds me of something the Joker would wear. I don't know why, but in the same way that the Joker like painted on a smile, it almost looks like if, if the Joker wore a face covering, it would be a clear mask. Cause it just, you can still see your face when you shouldn't be able to see your face. It's, it's supposed to like make you feel more at ease because you don't notice they're wearing a mask, but it, it has the exact opposite effect. 
Yeah, we're now going to be weirded out by seeing faces. This is fun. <laughs> All right, I, 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 I just think there's enough holes in that in that UVA game, and I don't know. I, I kind of like what uh what Georgia Tech's been up to here. I think they're a little frisky. Four feels a hair high, and I think uh, I think Virginia kind of emptied the tank, especially that second half against Syracuse. Like there was a moment there where they kind of came back at you know Syracuse was up early, then Virginia came back, kind of established themselves. Second half, okay, we got this, and then Syracuse had another comeback. I, I think that was a pretty draining win by Virginia, and uh, I, I think they're going to have trouble closing Georgia Tech out late. Give me, uh, give me Georgia Tech and the points. Colby, where are you at with this? Uh, well, first off, I, you know, I took Virginia to win the ACC, but my dog was Georgia Tech, guys. So I'm feeling that I'm in a pretty good spot, although I was not anticipating Florida State to get a bye. But uh, <laughs> no, it is what it is. But uh, no, I, I actually like Georgia Tech here, man. And I, I, Virginia lacks, this team lacks athleticism. Yeah. And, and, you know, they disappointed me today the way they looked, and they've disappointed me a lot of the season. I mean, I think Tony Bennett's a good enough coach where, yes, he's a clear-cut better coach than Josh Pastner, and I get Kramer's point there. But it's like I said, Georgia Tech, I think, is actually – you could argue that they're the most talented starting five in the whole ACC. Wasn't coaching one of the commandments? What, yeah. we, on short turnaround, aren't we supposed to respect – our our good coaches aren't we supposed to respect the tony bennett's of the world yeah i think he was on that list but i don't know man i just hate hate back in virginia the best thing that you got going is that jose alvarado injured his knee and his ankle a little bit today listen and no. on a day's no like yeah he came back and played and, and was a bulldog but i'm saying overnight that thing might get a little tight so that guy's a dog he is a dog. He's one of my favorite players to watch in college basketball. <laughs> and Kihei Clark, you better hope that thing is swollen because he's gonna take you to fucking lunch, man. He's gonna he's gonna go to lunch on your ass. And uh, I I just think <laughs> wait, you can't expect you to throw out go to lunch on your ass as if that's an expression that actually exists. Come on, he's gonna go, go to lunch. <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> After this, <laughs> this is Colby trash talking rec league basketball. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I'm gonna go to lunch on your ass. <laughs> normally, normally it's like with the girl. I say, hey, <laughs> because because if you know what it is, he was talking about. He's like, boy, you better hope I'm swollen because I'm gonna go to lunch on your ass. <laughs> oh. was gonna destroy. I mean, he's gonna go to lunch on his ass, dude. He's <laughs> It's go to it's go to town, uh, but but even go, something on your ass is not. What, what expression are you confusing it with? I don't even know. Because look, eating ass. Kramer, yes. I think you go to lunch in someone's ass at no, a. No, no. Sean, at, I think that's what you do at a portal, John. <laughs> right. Hey, I I do believe. Right, let's move on. We don't need to talk about these teams. No. I hate both of them. Georgia, hate them. Sprinkle some on the money line. All right, quick, uh, before we uh, get to more picks here, <laughs> hey, if you're, looking to, you're, if you're looking to go to lunch on your bookie, you know where you need to go, betql.com, baby. That's right. I've been, uh, I've been going to lunch on my bookie, and it's been great because betql hits you with these five-star picks. Again, there's so much action. Sometimes I don't, I don't really know uh, what Elon's, uh, free throw percentages. I like the Iona, Iona Gales, but why do I like the Iona Gales? Oh, okay, I see. Like BeckQL, they give you great picks, but they also serve you up some sweet confirmation bias of, yeah, I like UTSA tomorrow catching seven against Western Kentucky. Oh, that turned out to be a five star play for BeckQL. Yeah, baby, let's do it. So, uh, again, tons of data, tons of information, tons of picks. They're going to be running some uh, some like one day passes for March Madness for only two ninety nine. Come on, I mean that's two ninety nine. That's that's really literally nothing. And uh, even better, thirty percent off premium data. BetQL.com promo code SGP thirty. Second half of the six pack: Oklahoma State, Baylor. Love watching this uh, Cade Cunningham, even though they took down West Virginia. Oklahoma State, this team 
has a bit of a horseshoe up their ass, which makes sense because they're the Cowboys. But Cade Cunningham also, he kind of goes against com- some of the commandments. One, he's not a great ball handler. Uh, uh, two, they are, they're checking off that fairy tale narrative. They're getting nine points against Baylor. Ah, hmm. I, I don't know. That feels like that feels pretty high for an Oklahoma state team that can really score at will. Colby, what, what are you doing here? Well, first off on March 4th, just what a week ago, they lost by 11 to Baylor, but they didn't have like or I believe Cunningham didn't play this game either. Or if he did, I think he missed this game. Um, either way though, it, it they played too recently. I think uh, Oklahoma State's going to be able to fix some of the wrongs. Baylor uh, got tested by Kansas State. Um, I like Oklahoma State here, and I think Oklahoma State. Look, I don't care if he's not the greatest ball handler. This guy is a difference maker, and I would not want to see Oklahoma State on my bracket. I said this two weeks ago when they were eight nine seed. I was saying, man, if Gonzaga draws Oklahoma State in the second round. Now, now Oklahoma state's projected as a three. So just to show you how hot they've been lately in about a two weeks notice, they've jumped from a nine an eight or a nine to a three. Uh, uh, give me the nine points. Yeah, yeah. no. Oh, go Kramer. Well, I was just going to say the problem is again, this is March Colby. We just did an episode on things we need to pay attention to and think about Baylor turns teams over. Oklahoma State turns the ball over. Oklahoma State, also not a great free throw shooting team. Baylor, they can shoot the three pretty well. So what do we have here? We have a situation where by turning you over and running out fast breaks, plus being able to hit that three point, that three pointer, I think Baylor can absolutely stretch this out. I think people are going to be drawn into the plus nine they're gonna hear about Cade Cunningham I love this fucking show and I love fucking betting <laughs> did you mean to hit that drop Kramer no I did not mean to hit that drop that's the second okay. time it's just, it's just happened perfectly <laughs> I, I I I think that had Baylor not had a game where they had to pay attention a little bit like they did against Kansas State today I would, I would absolutely love the Oklahoma State angle, but they had the game one round too early, and now they're awake, and now they're present, and now guess what? Who won uh, Big 12 Player of the Year, Colby? Cade Cunningham. Cade Cunningham. Hmm. Wonder how the dude on Baylor feels about that. Wonder if he wants to get a little bit into into his ass for some lunch as you <laughs> – Because – Take his ass to lunch, too, and, and – and... <laughs> You know, they'll win by seven and I'll get the cover and I'll look like a genius. So, you know, all right. All right. I, I mean, I think Kramer makes a good, a, a good point there. I would call those almost like cup of coffee games where they, they, these teams that are kind of sleepwalking through tournaments or situations where they don't necessarily need it. They have the cup of coffee, they wake up, but this Oklahoma state team is playing like they need it. As Kobe points out, they're a three seed. They don't necessarily, I mean, they don't need to, you know, win the big 12 tournament to get in, but they kind of feels like they're playing like it. And there's a certain desperate nature to this team that I find appealing. So I'm going to take Oklahoma state and the nine. I, 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 I see Kramer's angle of, of the sleeping giant Baylor waking up and fading the public falling in love with Kate Cunningham. But uh, I don't know. let I wish we had the locker room line going tonight, but uh, cause I feel like that super drunk guy. I'd want to know what side he's on. I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like, okay. Caden Cunningham did play in the last game, uh, but Isaac Likalele did not. And this guy averages uh, just shy of 15 points a game. And uh, just, just a all around really good basketball player. I mean, covers it all uh, one, over a steal per game. This is a guy that's a difference maker. They didn't have him and they, they lost by 11. So they're going to need him. He might be their second best player on their whole team. Yeah, I'm with you, Colby. Missouri, Arkansas, Nashville, Tennessee, SEC, SEC. What do we? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and pull this lineup. Showing a minus three over on the DraftKings sportsbook. Use that promo code SGP. Arkansas laying three against Missouri. What'd you say, Kramer? Oh, I'm sorry. I was. I didn't think we had a number, and I was. I was fully prepared to tell you. I think I would make it four and a half. 
So. Well, your number's off. What uh, you would have Arkansas favored by four and a half, then that means. What does that mean? Then you're taking Arkansas now because you're getting one and a half points of value from your number. Is that correct? It's absolutely correct. And not only that, but earlier you mentioned uh, having a Nevada future, which I also have. And that made me head over to look to see what else I have. And I'm sitting on an Arkansas future too. So uh, yeah, I think they get started nicely here. Um, You know, I, I, I don't know what to think about this Missouri team. And, and it could just be that Missouri comes in and, and shocks people. But I, I, again, would be very surprised. A lot of the similar factors we just talked about free throw shooting. Arkansas does it pretty well. They can score the bucket. And on the other side, Missouri, they're not shooting the free throws all that well. They're not shooting the three point ball all that well. Uh, so some of the factors where I think maybe th- this is like upset city, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to take Arkansas. Like I said, I, I thought it, would have, it was going to be like four, four and a half. Colby, where are you at? You seem like a guy who might back Missouri here. Well, I'm a guy that took Missouri to win the SEC. Uh, when we did that, I, I, I just think th- Arkansas has won 13 of 14. By the way, their one loss coming to Oklahoma State. Um, and they've won nine in a row. And during that 13 of 14 stretch, they beat Missouri by five, by five, which was really a much closer game. They made some free throws, came down to really one possession. Uh, Missouri's going to get revenge here. The last time Arkansas stepped on a basketball court, they barely beat a and M who was dog shit lost in the first round in the play in game to, to Vanderbilt. I think Missouri is primed for a nice spot here, a nice revenge spot. And uh, give me the Tigers, uh, Quanzo Martin to get it done. And, and, and Kramer can bring up all the free throw shooting lines he wants with the Razorbacks. They're still a bad defensive team. Mm. Yeah. Oh man. I, I don't know. I, I'm going, I'm going chalk here with the Arkansas minus three. I, I'm with Kramer. I think maybe this is a little slightly underpriced. They just feel like the better team and, and three points. Um, I don't know. Not enough to scare me away from laying with them. And and I feel like a little bit more heat going with this Arkansas team. This next game, though, this is easy. This is this is Mountain West basketball. Ah, ooh, Wolfpack, baby. Nevada squares off against our gal, San Diego State, who have just uh, the cardiac kids, even in the Mountain West Conference, all over the map. Decker, uh, I've been talking to Decker about the San Diego State team. Doesn't believe in them. Thinks they're one-dimensional. I'm going uh, I'm going Nevada plus eight and a half here. They're just this team is just uh, I, I just like watching this team. They do a lot of things right. They just kind of fit that mold. I, I feel like there was a few years ago, Kramer, correct me if I'm wrong. We were uh, we were also on this Nevada team. They had some sort of like crazy odds to win the tournament. I had some vague recollection of you and I and uh some other guy having an argument about the the ways to hedge a giant Nevada future. I blow your but, mind. Yes, that was the last time we had March Madness, I believe. Colby, correct? Really? Wrong. That was Nevada with the brothers, the the the, the Arkansas now Arkansas coach, correct? Yes, uh, Eric Musselman and yes, uh, the the the, gu- the must bus. And 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 uh, they went to the oh, no actually the last time we had March Madness they lost in the first round of Florida the the year prior to that they went to the Sweet Sixteen they upset Cincinnati came back from I think eighteen points and we were having a blast in Vegas with that but yeah so yeah Sean I, I mean again what, Colby how would you describe the number when we saw Nevada was catching three and a half four points to Boise State last night uh, I said it was it, it, the the game smelled I was like why. Why is that the case? Because Nevada swept them, and then obviously, as the as we found out throughout the day, that Boise was missing one of their their better players too. So, I don't understand it. We both, we all three of us, rode the uh, Nevada money line or in, in with the points, and and I think this is another great spot. Me and Kramer have been giving out these eight point nine point dogs that have been hitting. So let's go ahead, Kramer. Are you down? The one. Let's go. I mean, not only that. Here's how. Sean, I have a question for you and Colby. Yes. Uh, I know we, you know, we like to be sound financial advisors and squeeze out that extra 10th of a percent for you uh, on our yearly returns. But I do have a, a Nevada to win the conference at 17 to one. I have a hundred to win 1700. Do I hedge at all on San Diego state? No, dude, come on. This is a stupid question. How would you even hedge this? Do I wait until Nevada's up and I bet it live? Maybe that's the move. 
Dude, how about this backcourt for Nevada, though? Sherfield and Cambridge together, 57 points. Sherfield, uh, I, I heard John Rothstein talking about him earlier tonight. He was saying he's going to be uh, All-American next year, uh, top point guard in the nation. So Grant Sherfield, freshman, coming into his own before our very eyes. Give me Nevada on the money line. Yeah, the only, thing, only thing that scares me is that the store, like, you're starting to see something with this Nevada team. And, and I, you know, perhaps – not enough people watch the Mountain West tournament, but god damn, do they not have the best looking court out of any championship court that I've seen so far? Uh, th this is a team. I want them to win. Again, I, I feel like I'm going to lose some money on some of these mid-majors this year in uh, in the tourney, but I want them to win just so I can bet on them again come uh, a week from now. Wait, now who's on the uh, other side of the uh, Mountain West semifinal? Uh well Utah State and then we're uh, we're waiting for right now Fresno State and Colorado State are tied up actually at the moment. I guess I'm kind of pencil and whoever wins this game is going to win the conference. But well, yeah, because I was uh, when Kramer was describing, uh, you know, making it seem like it was a done deal. Whoever won this game, I was thinking in my head, am I, am how, you know, how drunk am I? I thought this was the semifinal. All right, good to know. Good to know. Okay, we're gonna do a lock. Uh, don't, Kramer loves to to. to What's up, Colby? We we oh, just sorry, I don't know the, the sound. <laughs> uh, I I'm on Utah State. Uh, to I mean, they're my pick to win the, the Mountain West. Man, they won the Mountain West a season ago. They're, they've actually been kind of a blue blood in this conference tournament. In the conference tournament, Utah State has been the team over the past 10 to 15 years that wins the conference tournament in in, in the Mountain West. Keep an eye on the Aggies. All right. <laughs> well, we're okay. On, we're on the eight and a half for tomorrow. That's going to be the money line. I guess All right. I'm first lock dog tease. Oh, no, let's... not a not a tease. Lock dog and bonus lock. That's right. I, I, I'm. It just it, it rolls off the tongue, Sean. I oh, I know. I I you know. I'm the guy hitting the sound effects uh, normally. What do you, what's your lock dog and bonus lock, Kramer? Lock, uh, Georgetown dog Nevada. Bonus lock, and you know, the Arkansas number is is fishy to me. So I, I'm gonna take Purdue. I I think this Ohio State team is getting some some public love, and I I don't think they should be favored in this one. All right, my lock. I'm gonna go Nevada plus eight and a half. My dog. Oh, and I also like Nevada money line. But uh, you know, this is this. I mean, break out the shirts. This is big dog country. Give me, give me, uh, give me OK State money line. And for my bonus lock, hmm, what are some other? Uh, I don't know. Col I'm trying to think. What are some other good off board stuff that I like? Hold on. You give me one. You didn't like my on board. How about uh, or Oregon, the Civil War in basketball. Oregon minus nine. That's an interesting game. Uh, you got, uh, uh, what's it? Uh, Ohio, Toledo, Toledo minus three and a half. Cincinnati, SMU, Florida, Tennessee. Tennessee laying three. Um, there's also South Florida, Wichita State, Mississippi State, Alabama. How about Maryland, Michigan, Sean? Maryland catching eight against the, uh, the Wolverines. Yeah, that game's interesting, too. I, I do like... Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go off book here. I'm going to go Florida plus three. I, I think they have a good shot against Tennessee. Am I crazy? Call me. Yes. No, I mean, well, they just played like in the past week. I mean, Tennessee did win by 11, but you got to like the angle. Uh, I think, I think they get up for this, uh, for the sec tourney. All right, Colby lock dog and bonus lock. All right. Lock is let's go. Man, you know, you can't just give me I'm, – I'm not going to overthink this one, all right? Give me the eight and a half in Nevada. Yeah, let's go, baby. Dog, let's go Georgetown. I mean, it's just it, – they're going to win. They're going to win. <laughs> Watch out for them. Um, and bonus lock, bonus lock. I'll tell you, this is, this is, this is decent here. Give me – uh, Oregon minus nine. I know it's a rivalry game. Oregon is playing some of the best basketball. Yeah, I know. I, I keep fading them, and they just keep looking great. 
Trust me, I, I I I don't have a bracket, but if I had to, they might be in my final four. All right, now we're going to uh, shift gears, talk FCS college football. Before we do that, what a little bit more uh, college basketball talk, and that of course is Odds Crowd. That's right, Odds Crowd, new sponsor of the program. They got a sweet app here for tracking your picks, but more importantly, entering their contest where they're giving away $8,000 in cash prizes. Uh, last time, uh, you know, when they sent this copy over, there were less than 100 players in this contest. Uh, what other contest is giving away eight grand and has less than 100 people? I haven't heard of it. I've already entered into the contest. They haven't told me I'm not eligible, so I'm going to keep playing as if I'm eligible. Again, it's uh, basically fantasy gambling. You're doing free fantasy bets using real odds and real lines. You can do one, two, or three units. It starts on March 18th with the first four play-in games. So if you want to bet every game in the tournament, and the guy sent me an email saying, just so you know, other college basketball games that happen from March 18th on that aren't a part of the tournament are eligible. So I know that's exciting for Colby and uh, other hardcore DGENs. We're looking for every sort of action. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash odds. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash odds will take you right to the app. Again, let them know. Uh, let them know we sent you. Get in the contest. I don't know why you would not want to be in a free contest where all you do is pick college basketball bets that you're making anyway. And you have a chance at winning eight grand. Easy freaking money. FCS football. Colby, we have to we have to have an intervention for our uh, our good friend uh, Ryan Kramer over here. Ryan, do you want to take the do you want to take the podium? What's the problem? <laughs> it's March Madness. I don't know why we're talking about this division three football bullshit. <laughs> you guys, oh, man. Hey, let's talk about let's talk about women's football this spring. Well, I'll say I'll say this, Kramer. You are hitting your bonus locks at sixty-seven percent, in spite of horrific, astounding. We've been doing the podcast for a long time. This is the coldest I've ever seen you in any sort of run of a sport here. But your bonus, <laughs> your bonus locks are sixty-seven percent. So the move is number just one: ignore everything Ryan says picks wise, and and just take his bonus locks. Well, why is that, Sean? Because I don't have to pick one of Colby's shitty games. I can go <laughs> off the board and pick a game and give give the audience, a, you know, some proper handicapping. And look at that. Number one. No one else is 67%. Uh, oh, I'm tied with Colby, I guess. <laughs> I'm tied for first with Colby. Yeah, so in a three-man race, you're tied for first. And the reason why he, he you know, he wants to take jabs at this, at this subdivision, and that's yeah. because the last time they played JMU in Blacksburg, JMU did beat them, and and Virginia Tech was ranked, and you know he took he's he's feeling bad about the FCS. Even at the last full season Virginia Tech played, which doesn't count for last year with COVID with all those injuries, uh, they they barely squeaked by Furman twenty four seventeen in Blacksburg. I mean, give this league and conference the respect it deserves because they've shown it when they showed up in Blacksburg taking on you little. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Uh, see, this is why we, this is why we discuss. All right, let's run through these games. S football, it's right? Really, what do you mean? Run through? Come on! It's bedtime. There's no need. There's no need to run through. We're gonna slowly, methodically work our way through these games as we give people straight winners. Holy Cross, Lehigh football, Patriot League action, Colby, perfect timing. Maybe I will be. I might go over to this game and scout it out giving you a bird's eye view. I'm going to, if you have trouble uh, watching this game, which you most certainly will on television, just hit me up. I'll be running a Periscope feed from a remote location. I have a spot. I went at the same place. I watched a, a string cheese incident concert over at a Lehigh's campus years ago. It was pretty funny. Uh, uh, <laughs> string cheese incident opened up for um, Coolio. Now uh, it was, it was great because all these hippies, <laughs> hippies were there to see string cheese incident i got hit in the head with a glow stick anyway after string cheese incident was over coolio came on and was like hey everyone who's ready to go for a ride and then he does his like cool uh, coolio hit go on arrive and uh he walked the entire crowd as the headliner i've never seen that anyway talking lehigh football and of course back in a bethlehem 
Lehigh, home dog catching seven and a half. Are you kidding me? They were three and three in Patriot League action in 2019. They're, they're bringing back three of their six all Patriot League selections. What, re- what I really like is this Lehigh quarterback, though. He's a sophomore transfer from West Virginia, saw some action against Central Michigan, but more importantly, he beat out the senior quarterback that was supposed to be the starter. So a guy like that coming in, winning the job, that to me is a good sign that this kid is pretty good. And I, I don't know where Holy Cross gets off laying seven and a half points at Lehigh. Lehigh, baby. Let's go. Uh- well, there's one there's there's one reason why Holy Cross gets gets away with being a favorite here, and that is their six six senior quarterback Hunter Dejenhart. Legendary. <laughs> How are you gonna fade this guy? Look, his dad Chris Dejenhart used to play football for the Crusaders in 1986. This guy is, is I mean, he throws the ball all over the field. He's 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 a honor roll student in 17 and 18. This guy can break down a defense faster than anybody, but at the same time, I'm with you, shit stack in the money green. The hook is too much. The last time they played Holy Cross won only by seven. This was a good game. I expect it to be a good game again. Give me the hook and Lehigh, but watch out for my guy Connor D. Jen Hart. Well, yeah, and and I think there's you know, there is a uh there's a sweet spot there with QB height and six, six, then you're getting in that weird, almost too tall Brock Osweiler territory. So yeah, I, I think Lehigh great spot here. But, DJ and Hart's better than Daniel Jones. Are we, all, can we, can we agree? <laughs> oh yeah. That's obvious. I well, tweeted uh, a very beautiful picture of Daniel Jones <laughs> overnight last night and no one liked it. It made me very, <laughs> that, Kramer. I mean, seriously, why are the giants, they have a decent team. Uh, I mean, not decent, but they they have a couple of players. Like, don't they owe it to their fans to try and trade for Deshaun Watson, try and trade for Russell Wilson? They're not even considered. What the hell's going on? I thought we were talking about Division Three football, Sean. Are you trying <laughs> to bring up my man Daniel Jones, franchise quarterback of the New York football giants. All rise. Listen, how are you going to fade DJ and Hart, John? Because he's, la- he's laying seven and a half on the road in Bethlehem. There's snow on the ground outside. I'm doing my Colby impression with the soundboard over here. I, I, you know what, Colby? I, uh, touche. I, I caught a little of the college experience loading up with some solid loot Holtz action. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. We well, got to get that on your guys to one because that sound drops incredible. You got to start dropping in sound drops when you call in remotely, just take it all over. Having Lou Holtz just completely mumbling. That is a sound drop we need to acquire. I'm on the, uh, I'm on the opposite side of you guys. At some point you're going to regress and I'm going to regress. It's happening this week. Oh man. Feel so good about, uh, about Kramer laying seven and a half with Holy cross. I'm going to, I'm going to wake my dad up now and, and tell him to put on his Lehigh sweatshirt. Cause we could just lock this bad boy up. Uh, by the way, I'm 55.88% uh, picking FCS football against the spread. In case you're wondering, mm. Stony Brook. This is just, this is why you turn into spring football. A CAA matchup, two Titans going head to head. The Delaware Blue Hens in beautiful Newark, Delaware, oh. laying, eight, <laughs> laying eight against Stony Brook. I'll say this, Colby, Delaware. Legit defense, possibly one of the best defenses in the FCS, and certainly a reason why. I mean, Delaware is ranked 19. I could see if they have a nice win against Stony Brook, which uh, I'm tipping my hand here. I, I think they will. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Blue Hens are a top 10 program come next week. Give me Delaware laying eight. The, the defense, they they're coming off a shutout. And Stony Brook's offense, they struggled against Nova. They put up 13 points against Nova's defense, which is certainly certainly not lights out. I, I think I think they're uh, I mean, if you can get a you know, if you can get a Stony Brook team total, you may want to take the under. All about that. I tried to warn you guys, because look, I got the Delaware shirt on. You know, I, I know my blue hens. Kaka! And uh 
And look, this team is really good, though. I'm, I'm serious. Uh, what Danny Rocco, the head coach, former Richmond head coach, and I expect with JMU struggling week in, week out, I think Delaware is the team to beat in the CAA. I think they're a national championship contender. Keep an eye out. They return, what, 15 starters. Nolan, Nolan uh, Henderson, their quarterback, good player. Uh, give me them to roll. This is this is all day, man. The Blue Hens are for real. They're probably better than the Giants. What is the uh, what is the name? Go Blue. Stony Brook is the Sea Wolves. Is that accurate? It is, I believe. The Sea Wolves. I don't know how a Sea Wolf is going to fight a hen on on land. Oh, good angle. <laughs> no, I mean, look, I you watched. I thought the the main team was supposed to be decent. Delaware beat the shit out of them. Obviously, I don't like laying points with the team after they win, but with by thirty seven points. But I'm going to lay the points. Delaware looks really good, and I think I think. Colby, they're probably feeling a little disrespected with these ratings. Definitely, man. And I watched that Villanova Stony Brook game and, and Villanova left a lot of points out there. So that score was deceiving. Delaware wins big. How do you, ha- I don't understand how Delaware is only 19. I, I watched that game. They're a good football team. Yeah. It was, well, it's weird. I don't understand the ranking system either because South Dakota state, uh, same record as Northern Iowa. They beat Northern Iowa, but yet Northern Iowa's in the top five. South Dakota State's for much further back. Um, and James Madison, I mean, they are number one right now, three and zero. Uh, a very, they've had a couple scares already. Again, if I was the committee, North Dakota just quality win after quality win. Certainly, a lot of it could be maybe because they are they've just been at home. Uh, so far in those three wins, but still that's some quality teams and that, and North Dakota, uh, regular North Dakota, AKA good North Dakota. I, I, they just look good, man. They should be number one. They should be. Yeah. Number one. Weber state, AKA Weber state, number two, con- a new, number two team in the country. A little overrated in my mind. They're laying 11 at home against UC Davis. I think, I think the uh, voters are, uh, you know, there's, they're, you know, they're falling in love with Bronson Barron coming off his 314 yards, four touchdown performance. However, you see Davis, no slouches. Hunter Rodriguez, 243 yards and three touchdowns. This UC Davis offense, I think, is frisky enough to keep them in this game. I'll take uh, Davis plus 11. Colby, are you with me here? Are you you laying the big chalk? No, I like the points, man. Weber State's kind of a grinded out team as it is. They struggled against Idaho State and and UC Davis. We yeah, knew. we're in the FCS playoffs. What just uh, two years ago, Dan Hawkins, former Boise Boise State head coach, Colorado head coach. He's got a good. You mentioned uh, the the quarterback Rodriguez. He could play. Uh, UC Davis sticks around. Uh, give me the eleven points. Weber State probably gets the win, but give me UC Davis to 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 flirt, 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 make this a close game. Three point win. Three point. Kramer, win. do you want to uh, make the wrong pick here and take Weber State, or are you are you going to see the light and take UC Davis? No, I mean I think with some of these teams, you just you haven't seen enough, and so I you know maybe the spread would have been two touchdowns before last week. Maybe maybe it's gone down and we're getting bad value, but you know what the fact that you get all these yards on off like I don't think we've seen a single team that's looked really good or looked efficient on offense then completely lay an egg the next week have we Colby is there anyone you can because I feel like with offense especially the teams that have come out and shown they can move the ball have pretty much moved it consistently I feel like that's just pretty accurate I feel like that's pretty accurate I would say so, Nichols struggled a little bit last week but they got it together in the, in the second half 11, 11 seems nice I'll take it well, Nichols seems like a bit of an outlier. Didn't they have some, uh, or I mean, just like, didn't they light it up to an insane degree earlier on in the season? Yeah, they won 87 to <laughs> something or 87 to three or something and then 55 nothing. And then last week, that, last week they were in control of the game, but definitely I think we're overlooking their opponent. Struggled a little bit, put it together in the second half, got it done. So, yeah, that would be the only one that, that comes to mind off the top of my head. Maybe, maybe JMU. Maybe JMU, actually, after Moorhead State, they, they've struggled. J- JMU won the game last week. They were losing the whole game, and they won off of blocking a punt with about four minutes left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, how does, that, how does that not hurt them in the rankings? I guess it's just survive in advance. I mean, win the game, and, and yeah, it should. It's pedigree. And, it's pedigree. That's what it is. The JMU pedigree. It is. Heard it here first. Okay, uh, we got the second half of the six-pack coming up. 
Before we get to that, I want to shout out Better Edge, man. BetterEdge.com. What a better way to bet when you're betting with Better Edge. That's right. They make it simple. You throw out a bet, someone takes the other side, kind of like a stock market. Except, uh, you know what? You know what's great about the stock market? You don't have to pay a VIG, and you can say the same thing for betteredge.com. Use that promo code SGP for a free $10 play. A lot of fun uh, contests as well. Again, over at bettor edge.com, promo code SGP. Colby, beat the database contest. What's happening with it? Uh, I need to check. I know I, so uh, I know what I did. I, I, I hit on my, uh, actually, no, I, I, I think so. I think they beat me because I did two bets in East Carolina. Uh, I took with the points and did not cover, got my heart, my heart, <laughs> got involved. my heart got involved. Yeah. Too. See, even, even the Danta base, that's the great thing about better edge.com. You can find suckers like Colby who are betting with their heart instead of logic. And you can take their money because uh, they're staking their own cash there. No middlemen involved. BetterEdge.com, a better way to bet. BetterEdge.com, promo code SGP. Northern Iowa heads to Carbondale, Illinois. Face off against the Salukis. Salukis catching four as they are a four-point home dog. Southern Illinois, Colby, what are your thoughts on this team at home? I'll say this. They showed me a, uh, in Southern Illinois, they showed me a lot by not letting down after that North Dakota state win, uh, you know, which was like a big program shaking win. And they still won again and covered against Youngstown state the following week. And now they're at home as a home dog. Why am I not taking Southern Illinois here? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm on Southern Illinois here too. Uh, look, a dome team out in some cold weather, and, and then Southern Illinois has a guy named uh, Stone Labonowitz on their team. <laughs> is, is Stone Labonowitz seeing the field? Because I, I know he did like about five minutes on Stone Labonowitz, and then I looked up the uh, box score, and I don't think he got in. Yeah, Nick Baker's been the guy. Stone <laughs> been, you know, he's been performing in, with the women. So, uh, has. <laughs> Time to hit the field. Nick Baker's been doing a great job, though. Uh, give me uh, this is an interesting matchup, though. Northern Iowa was kind of rebounded after that that terrible coaching performance in the first game. I, oh I guess, God, brutal! South Dakota, but I, I, or South Dakota State, but uh, I think uh, Southern Illinois. I truly think is the better team here, guys. And uh, now that they're back home, last time they were home, they destroyed North Dakota State. I look for them to do the same with Northern Northern Iowa. Give me them to uh, to get the win. Yeah, I mean, I also just the fact that their loss is against North Dakota, who we now know, at least in my mind, one of the best teams in FCS this season. So, yeah, I, I don't, I'm, I'm with you. I, I don't know. I think this Northern Iowa team has kind of appeared to be fraudulent. I, I want nothing to do with betting on them. The, the point, the spread doesn't make any sense to me. I guess that would be the, the thing that scares me, considering how in touch I've been with the uh, FCS the point spreads this. <laughs> But I'm going to take the points. You guys might be in trouble. I, we, we seem to be agreeing a lot. If you watch this game, keep an eye on Avante Cox, the wide receiver for Southern Illinois. 28 catches, 351 yards. This guy's a playmaker. They've only played three games, guys. That's a, that's putting up some monster numbers. So uh, Avante Cox, the guy to shut down if you're a Northern Iowa Panther fan. Kramer, you got to play the long Cox drop there. Come on, man. I, I, I got it in there. Cox. <laughs> I mean, now we got a Southland uh, matchup here in Huntsville, Texas. Sam Houston State, a.k.a. Go Bearcats. You know he's going to be rooting hard for his Bearcats, squaring off against Nichols. I'm still a little angry about uh, Sam Houston State boning me by only winning by five instead of the minus six. Uh, this one's this one, I think, again, could be tough for Sam Houston State because they kind of got exposed as not having a defense but I really like their, their offense. I, and it, it, even if it's a shootout, I, I think I'm going with the Bearcats covering the three. I I'm a little worried about their defense and, and Nichols offense, which seems decent enough. Kobe, where are you at with this game? I, I'm going to go Sam Houston state, but uh, you know, I'm not, I could be swayed here. And I am certainly worried about Sam Houston state's defense. Also breaking news. We just followed at, at Labana with stone who is on uh, Twitter, an amazing, I mean, this guy is, um, you know, this guy has a real, real, uh, I mean, how did this guy not end up at Washington state? I'm looking, you got it. 
Yeah, yeah he's got some real Gardner Minshew vibes. Maybe he'll transfer there for a year. <laughs> we gotta send him. We gotta send his uh, game tape to Coach Leach because I, I think he's gonna fit in. Maybe we try and get him on the uh, on the uh, on the show. He also has hashtag JUCO product in his uh, profile, which I think is uh, pretty sweet. But uh, but Colby, what are you doing with this game, guys? Uh, Nichols has a court. Like I, I watched Sam Houston State struggle against uh, Southeast Louisiana, and they're a good team. But they're, Nick uh, Nick uh, Nichols' offense is much. Yeah. This kid, Lindsey Scott, the quarterback of Nichols. After I've watching all the games that I've watched of FCS, this is the one who jumps out at me. I mean, this this guy, true dual threat. He's had a hundred yards. I mean, he, I think last week he had ninety two yards rushing, and uh, just about three hundred yards passing. The game before that, he had 120 rushes on the ground, 300 yards passing, six touchdowns, three in the on the ground and three in the air. This guy's a problem, and 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 Sam Houston State's defense stood out to me as a clear weak link of that of that team. Lindsey Scott's going to assassinate that defense. Give me Nichols to win this one. Is this? The, do we take a total here and just take the over? It sounds like. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm. I'm with you. I think Nichols is the play. I think this is going to be a, a track meet, and I. I don't know if Sam Houston State's going to keep up. Yeah, oh, man. You know what? I'll, I'll stay on my Sam Houston State Island in honor of in honor of Go Bearcats. But I. I am worried about this Nichols offense. And that would be a pretty good angle for us to start being like a, uh, a, a mediate, a mediator for coach Leach. We start bringing him a FCS <laughs> recruits with one year of eligibility left. Just, I'm going to just start searching the hashtag Juco product and just give him the best of what I can find <laughs> and, and sneak in some footage of Bigfoot. <laughs> look, look at Lin- Lindsay Scott. This is not, a, they won 87 to three in the opener, right? No, yeah, I mean, I, I'm with you. It's it's probably the right way to go. I'm not even quoting his stats in that game. I'm talking about the next game against Lamar, who's in their own conference. So the, he was 28 of 35 for 385 yards, five touchdowns, zero interceptions. Whoo! And and he rushed for over 100 yards. I mean, this is Lamar Jackson of the SCS level. Watch out for Lindsey Scott. Move over, Trey Lance. Lindsey Scott. I mean, and also these guys are draft eligible, right? So could they not like, let's say some of these guys go off crazy. Is there a chance any of these guys playing right now get drafted Colby this upcoming NFL draft? Sure. I mean, I wouldn't surprise me, especially the way that, you know, this current generation, they're probably like, Hey, let's quit on my team and go to the NFL and (laughs) uh, try to play and end up. (laughs) I knew Colby was either going to have a dig on millennials or uh, the NCAA athletic system, some sort of uh, some sort of pot shot. Uh, Last, it's like Jalen Johnson just quits on Duke. They could have, I mean, well, I guess it turned out to be a good thing for him because of the COVID thing. But uh, maybe he gave that walk on COVID. Well, I was going to say, or maybe he's just a leader showing them how to quit on the season. <laughs> <laughs> he walked so they could run. I mean, come on. Awesome. Let's admit this. Coach K, he, Coach K wanted nothing to do with playing basketball all the way back in the beginning of the season. So now what does he get? He gets to say, we were on a run. You never know what could have happened. Yeah, best case scenario. You well, never know. Since you took a dump on the college football playoffs, I'm okay with Coach K right now, all right? Uh, all right. Austin P, my governors, squaring off against Southeast Missouri State in Cape Girardeau, <laughs> Missouri. It's a French word, so you, you know. Come on, Girardeau, <laughs> Cape Girardeau, for some Ohio Valley football. I'm gonna take Austin P catching the five and a half. It's not just because I have a governor's jersey and I have them uh, at forty to one to win the FCS championship. They're coming off a bye. I think they kind of slept walk that through that first game. They looked legitimately good in that second game. They got the running game going, didn't win by a huge margin in that second game where they probably should have. However, I think them as a dog, they're going to be frisky. This feels like a three or four point game, five and a half, a little too high. Uh, I'll back you. I mean, this is a, a I think a really good game in, in Cape Gurdu. Um, but uh, Austin P getting five and a half. I, I think this is a field goal game. Uh, go Governors. Hopefully they get it done. So, this is your favorite team. Yes. All of the FCS. Well, I. You know what? Well, no. Now, honestly, North Dakota is my favorite team now. 
AK uh, Good North Dakota. Front runner. <laughs> no, it was more. Well, yeah, I mean, they are fun to watch and they're good, but really, it's just because they're the rivals of North Dakota State, my least favorite. Well, uh, if you're a, you know, if you're an enemy of my enemy, you're my friend, North Dakota. <laughs> All right. Well, what I was going to say is I, 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 Five and a half. What does that tell you? They're throwing a pickle at the fucking wall and they're hoping it mm. sticks. Give me Austin P. Too many points. Austin P. That was painful. <laughs> what was painful? Picking Austin P. Yeah, yeah. I'm worried, Colby. Kramer agreed with a lot of our picks. This <laughs> could be. He is trying. He's trying to. He's like the Rudy Gobert trying to spread his virus oh, all over us. <laughs> oh, you're I, be I was just oh, that's fucked up. I was just watching the one year anniversary of when uh, sports got shut down. We should uh, Kramer. I meant to text you this, but we should rerun our reaction podcast to when they canceled March Madness, just so people are are thankful for uh, for actually having March Madness this year. And I think it would be kind of a funny listen one year later. Just post it as uh, in case you missed it. <laughs> yeah. In case you guys haven't heard of the uh, quarantine and the pandemic, here's a, here's our live reaction. It, I, I almost want to re-listen to it just because I feel like I was probably saying a lot of stuff of, oh, this is going to be over in two weeks. Come on. This is stupid. I remember I was I had a controversial – I feel like me guessing that uh, sports would be back July 4th was, like, controversially long, you know? Yeah. I mean, I set the over under on uh, two thousand people uh, passing away from COVID. So again, <laughs> not great at handicapping COVID, and uh, you know what? I am great at handicapping college basketball. I feel like we've been we've all been on a pretty good streak here so far with our college basketball picks. Not well. Eh, I did pretty decent today. Probably not my best day, but again, I'm looking at my balance right now. It's looking pretty solid, well, and I'm about. Oh, sorry, Sean. I was going to interrupt to let you know. And now that we're tracking uh, the locks over on the picks page again, I'm I'm noticing that now that I've hijacked the uh, page, I'm at seventy three percent of my locks, Sean. Wow. That. How ah. about them apples? How about them apples? Let's go. Well, Ryan, was doing the live read for Better Than Vegas, and if you want daily video locks from us you can get them over at sports gambling podcast.com slash btv they'll take you right to our profile page and you got to enter the capper contest again it's capped out at 64 teams much like the march madness contest or just like march madness itself they're giving away 5500 bucks again all you gotta do is submit your picks uh through their video site just go to better than dot vegas fill out the uh little questionnaire there it takes two seconds let them know uh, you heard about the contest on the sports gambling podcast. So they think we're awesome. And yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. I know I'll be entering my picks Colby. Make sure you sign up as well. Get the whole squad going. One of us, I mean, come on, this is a bunch of cash and they don't seem to care that we're participating. So it's great. And a sweet bonus for everyone. And again, it's free. Why would you not want to enter as many free college basketball contests as you can? Okay, let's close things out with the lock, dog, and bonus lock, FCS football. Kramer, don't want to mess up the mojo. You're going to go first. What's your lock, dog, and bonus lock? Well, it's, I'm going to try to do this as as perfectly as possible. I think Delaware minus eight is the lock. Oh, you <laughs> bastard. I think so. this, is, this is an all-time sabotage. I think Southern Illinois uh, on the money line is the dog. And I think the bonus lock, uh, a little surprised. Wrong team's favored. Nichols gets it done. All right. Nichols plus three. Kramer, so are, you a, are you able to uh, – do you have the uh, DraftKings Sportsbook app in front of you? Are you able to find a line for uh, the North Dakota game this week? Yeah, I'll pull it up. All right. While you're doing that, I'm going to throw my lock. Oh, and Delaware's only minus eight, Kramer. I don't know if you said, you said eight and a half, I think, oh, but they're whatever, whatever. Want to give you, want to give you that extra point of value for my lock. I was going to go Delaware, but I don't want anything that Kramer's touching. Give me UC Davis plus 11 for my dog. Lee. Hi, let's go baby. And for my bonus lock, 
North Dakota, whatever they're laying. I mean, this team is 20 and a half against the Western Illinois leather. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think this North Dakota team, they're, they're just legit. So North Dakota minus 20 and a half it's in Western Illinois, but I, I don't think they can make this line big enough. Colby, close it out. Um, uh, I mean, I'm little bummed Kramer back my guys, you know, but I gotta, I gotta rep them. I'm wearing the t-shirt. Give me the blue hands. I'm going to say I think they roll against Stony Brook and, uh, and I mean, they won, they won by the same amount of score. I think, uh, last year at Stony Brook. So this is home. They got 15 starters back. They're going to dominate. Um, my dog, man, you, you can't look past, you can't look past Southern Illinois here. Southern Illinois is going to get this thing done. Uh, catching four at home in Carbondale in the bonus. Yeah, that is good. The bonus play is easily. This is the lock. Tonus, uh, Tennessee State, the Tigers, minus two and a half against Eastern Illinois. Eastern Illinois has been dog shit so far this year. Tennessee State, almost, I mean, they they played that score was a little deceiving with Jacksonville State a week ago. They were playing with them. The Tigers are going to roll at home, minus the two and a half. Love the Tigers in this spot. Put some Put some big bucks on that. Put some big bucks on that. Wow. Quick programming note, Sean, since we're not, we're not being reminded to take Eastern Washington laying 17 against Idaho state, Idaho state coming off a win. (laughs) That doesn't happen too often. Also, uh, if you're wondering, Tarleton plays Dixie state. That's a four point spread last in. They've already played once this year, two weeks ago. So Doing some more battle. I'm sorry. Continue, Kramer. Well, the last thing I'll say uh, is just my Wofford Terriers weren't on the sheet. I'm going to assume you did that uh, to protect me because I would lay the two points with Wofford. They were initially on the sheet, but also, look, I want to give a, a shout out to uh, to ESPN finally grabbing uh, the, the Jacksonville State Mississippi State game Sunday afternoon. That'll be on ESPN, too. They're finally listening to some of the fans. Put more of these games on networks. Jackson State laying 14 and a half. Deion Sanders undefeated so far as a head coach. I say lay the points. Go Tigers. Yeah, that is a uh, – I mean, it's Deion Sanders coaching Jackson State. What more What more action do you need? Wow, we just wrapped up our uh, fifth podcast of the week on the, uh, on the SGP feed. Speaking of five, you know, it would be pretty awesome to see a five-star rating and review from you guys, the listeners giving out a ton of gear merch Monday for merch madness starts this Monday. So get your review in. If your review is lucky enough to be chosen, you get a hat, a hoodie and a t-shirt. Oh my God. Tremendous value. Again. So everything, every sort of promo or ad we read was just people trying to give you free shit on top of the free content we're already giving out. What a world. And of course, uh, thank you guys, as always, for tuning in the podcast. Next time we'll be on air. It will be Selection Sunday. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green, and he is Ryan. I'll see you in a week, Virginia Tech. Kramer, let it ride.